So let's look at two examples using entropy. But this one here, if you open the window with the air conditioning on, the cold air goes out. <laughs> Physicist, no! Why is that? Of course, remember, it's because it's actually hot air comes in. Remember, heat always moves from hot to cold. All right, so let's look at this. We have a closed room. And I've seen uh, past exam questions do different versions of kind of asking the same thing. You have a closed, let's assume it's an isolated room here, and it contains a refrigerator. So this is my attempt to draw a 3D refrigerator. So here's the door open, and this is the inside of it. And this thing here is plugged in, of course, and it's running. So what will happen to the temperature of the room? So it might be counterintuitive, but the temperature of the room will actually increase. Now, your intuition might say, no, 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 a fridge, what does it do? It cools things. So of course, if you leave it open, and you know, it's just going to cool the room. Well, locally, maybe. But in this entire room right here, assuming it's sealed off, what's really happening here? Well, you've got, of course, yes, there is a little bit of sort of cold air coming out. So sure, there is some, you know, there's some Q cold here. Yeah, sure. But keep in mind, this thing, when it operates, have you ever touched the back of a refrigerator, like the very back of it right here? There's like this big fan basically here. And this right here is, I'm just trying to draw this big fan. I'll say fan or pump or whatever it is you're going to use, right? So fan slash pump. Now what is it doing? Well, it's actually going to be emitting. Have you ever touched the back of it? It's really hot. So actually, this is Q hot. And I can tell you this, this here is going to be the amount that it heats is going to be a lot more than the amount that it cools. So yes, a little locally, like right in front, sure. But this thing here heats way more than this one here cools. So that might seem really counterintuitive, but it really is what will happen. Now we can look at this from the sort of entropy point of view as well, right? Because what does entropy have to say about it? Well, it says that although entropy can decrease locally, the fan and the pump, they increase the entropy in the room more. So what do I mean by that? That means overall an S goes up, the entropy goes up. So that's sort of another way to see it, just using entropy instead. Let's look at another example. So here we have a cycle, and we're told it's a heat engine and it undergoes, let's see what happens here. It's an isothermal expansion from A to B. Then it's got an isovolumetric change, BC. And after that, an adiabatic compression, CA. And we're told that the temperature at B is larger than the temperature at C. In other words, it goes from colder to hotter here. And the question is this, at which point in this cycle, A, B, or C, is the entropy the largest, and why? This may not seem obvious, so maybe let's just look at this equation for entropy first of all. We need to know that. So let's write that down. So delta S equals delta Q over T. And then let's look at each of these pieces and see what happens to the entropy. Because we don't know the exact value of entropy at A and B and at C, but we can look at how it changes. So let's split these up into all three different cases here. Let's start off with this one here, this isothermal one right here. Let's see what happens here. We have that the change in entropy, remember, is related to the change in heat over temperature. So because of that, let's just rewrite uh, the first law of thermodynamics just with all the deltas in this. So delta Q will be delta U plus delta W. In other words, a change in internal energy plus a change in work. All right, well, let's take a look at this and see if we can figure this out. Now, this thing right here is isothermal. So what does that mean? Isothermal means that the temperature, temperature will be constant because it's isothermal. And what does that mean? If the temperature is constant, that means then that the change in internal energy, remember that contains a temperature term, if the temperature is constant, then there's no change. Because of that then, I know that delta U equals zero. What else do I know? Well, I also know from uh, the uh, delta W here, right, that right there is the area under the curve. And because it actually goes uh, to the right, okay, so because it goes to the right, what do I know then? I know that work, uh, so delta W equals A positive. So what does that mean? That means when I do this plus this, what do I end up with? I end up with, uh, I could state then that, whoop, like this right here. Um, maybe I'll just put a little square around, or at least a circle around this, and just to say, hey, we're using this right here. And the conclusion then is that delta Q then must be positive. Therefore, delta S goes up. In other words, you know, the entropy goes up. This is my sort of conclusion here.
is that at least from A to B, the entropy increases here. Now what happens, let's look at uh, maybe this case right here. Let's look at that one. So we'll do the same idea, the same exact treatment here. So delta Q equals delta U plus delta W. And let's see what we do here. So what do we know about the temperature? Well, we were told that the temperature at B is larger than the temperature at C. So that means to go from B to C, the temperature then must go down. What does that mean? That means that delta U must be negative. So that's one conclusion I can make. What can I see about uh, the work done? Remember this one right here? This right here is the area. But the area is going to be zero from B to C. It's going to be zero. So because of that, then I have delta W equals zero. And if I put these two pieces together, then what do I get? Well, of course, I get then that delta Q is negative. So that means I can state then that delta S, I can write it like this then, delta S goes down. That means the entropy decreases actually here. Okay. Now let's look at this last one right here from C to A. This one here is adiabatic. So let's maybe do this. I'll maybe extend this one a little bit more just to make sure it's clear here. You know what? Let me just do my arrow again because that was really messy. So I'll go like this right here. So again, in this case right here, again, I'm going to write this down just so we have it. So it's delta U plus delta W. But here, though, it's adiabatic. We were told this, right? The, and if this right here is adiabatic, what does that mean again? Do you remember your definition of adiabatic? It means delta Q equals zero. Whoops, I'll write this in blue. So that means, that's really, really important, okay? Adiabatic means delta Q equals zero. Well, then I'm done, in a sense, because then I can just put this all together and say, hey, hold on. If delta Q is zero, then what's my entropy, change in entropy? Well, if this is zero, this is also zero. So that means delta S oops, equals zero, which means the entropy doesn't change. Okay, what can we state then from all this? What does this mean for us? Well, it means that this value of entropy, whatever it is, we don't know the number, but from A to B, it gets larger. Okay, so imagine this number gets bigger here, then it gets smaller here, and then it stays the same. So can you see where is it the largest then? Does it make sense? It's actually at B. So I hope that makes sense. So entropy is largest at B. So I thought those were two good examples showing entropy in action. One, just a conceptual question, and one actually to really kind of have you concentrate hard on these different parts of the cyclic process here.